2020 has been a tough year for a lot of us but uh, I wanted to point out that it has also been an interesting year in terms of advancement in technology and innovation namely in the PC components market. Hi, my name is Yoshi. I'm an average consumer. I'm a sim racing enthusiast. I s stream my races in Twitch, Facebook and YouTube occasionally. And I wanted to share with you my unique experiences in uh, upgrading my PC in 2020. And as written in the title, this is this is my first custom loop water cooled system. That's a mouthful, yeah. But anyway, stick around. Over the years, I have been very reliant on YouTube videos, Google, Reddit for product reviews and tech news. But I thought that some of the things that I've experienced in building this new PC has not been featured in uh, the sources that I usually look up to. So yeah, I hope this is going to be helpful for some of you. Anyways, before I uh, move ahead and show you the new PC, I would like to share with you where I came from. Um, so this is the previous daily driver that I had. It's a PC enclosed in an ITX form factor case from Fantex Evolve Shift X. It's a nice looking PC case, uh, but I had to order a custom front, front panel for, head, for it to have a better air cooling, airflow. So the CPU was an 8700K Intel processor uh, cooled by Corsair AIO cooler 240mm and the GPU of Asus GTX 1080Ti this was GTX so not RTX yeah so yes uh, my previous PC was actually good it served me well for the past three years I guess but uh, there's a couple of reasons why I need to upgrade yeah so one I'm doing more with my PC right now. I I do my work with it. I do my family video editing. I actually have another uh, YouTube channel just dedicated for family videos. And I edit more photos in my PC. So basically I do everything on my PC yeah, in one system. And this, the previous PC that I just showed you has been not up to the task anymore it's getting laggy it's getting slow and sometimes crashes on me so that's one and the second reason is that I have a full setup here full rig with all the uh, peripherals bottom boxes steering wheel pedals shifters handbrakes whatnot yeah? and uh, I've always been concerned how much of that input resolution has been translated to the PC whilst going through all the uh, USB hubs and plus you know as uh, as I use more hubs and uh, some of the peripherals were not working properly so I needed an ATX case with more USB hubs third reason is that I, I, uh, I've been enjoying myself streaming recently um, it's good it's fun and uh, it's good for my driving as well because I can review the whole situation through YouTube twitch anytime I want and um, and it's good to you know it's good to keep a record of what you've done in the past for you to learn from it and yeah but unfortunately the previous PC was uh, terrible it was terrible two minutes skip frames and sometimes uh, yeah Anyways, the whole experience was unpleasant, to say the least. So, yeah, I needed something new, and I was actually tempted to get the 2080 Ti in that regard because it had an NVENC encoder, but I purposely held off because I knew something more better, something, you know, more uh, exciting was coming. So, here's the new PC. It's an open air case uh, from Barrow, Barroch. It's called Mobula. I've seen few, very few videos of this build in uh, YouTube. 
so it was a scary scary situation scary experience for me but I had to pull the trigger because I liked the layout uh, I can actually orient it horizontally where in all the I uh, IO the inputs outputs uh, coming through the, uh, the underneath the case so I could then route them uh, route them all in the aluminum profile where I placed this PC on and fortunately it had an additional part additional optional part where you could Originally, I think the purpose is to put on additional radiators, but I I uh, bought it for it to have uh, mounting holes for it to be screwed directly to the AT prof AT40 aluminum profile in my rig. So it turned out well, and the power supply is also si sitting uh, behind the case, behind the motherboard, which makes it a little bit more cleaner. Uh, than the P5, Thermaltech P5 or P9 that I was also considering at the time. So as for the power supply, I went all out with 1200 watts. Uh, this one is uh, came from Asus ROG Thor rated platinum. A very nice looking one with a LED panel which shows you the power output and an RGB flash, uh, which I was hoping would look good uh, on this new PC case unfortunately this is one of the things that I, that I wish I knew prior to buying this power supply is that it didn't fit with the cover that is sold separately which is supposed to cover all the cables that was coming out from the power supply so I had to buy another one 850 watts same one though RNG Thor and uh, as I feel fiddled around it, I realized the power socket, which was supposed to come down from it, cannot be oriented the way I want it to be oriented because the mounting was blocking the, the socket. Yeah, so I was actually hoping the LD panel to show out uh, it was to, to be facing outwards, it ended up to be facing inwards. So <laughs> All the benefit that I was uh, I was hoping uh, was not there. It's not possible. So it's unfortunate, but still, it's a platinum rated power supply. So yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> As for the motherboard, I got the ASUS Crosshair Formula Eight. Given that I wanted a water cooled system, I wanted to you know maximize uh, the capability to cool more parts including the VRM and plus I thought the routing for the uh, water tubes uh, would look better in this uh, motherboard so I went with this as for the uh, SSD uh, M.2 drives I got the one from uh, Seagate Fire Cuda 520 I bought two one is at one terabyte the second one is a two terabyte. I heard it's uh, good for gaming, uh, decent speed, so this is what I got. As for the fans, I got the Corsair IQ QL120. I got four of them for the two 240mm radiators that are mounted behind the case. They look nice, and uh, yeah, I thought it would improve the aesthetics of the case. So. I got this one thing that I was hoping to do which which I thought would be unique but then ultimately was not possible was to put a Thunderbolt 3 card on this board so what I did is that I, I bought an uh, extension uh, riser extension cable from one one of the smaller PCI slots in the motherboard to be protruding outside the mount ma, the graphics board mounting and uh, I was hoping to mount this Asus Thunderbolt X 3TR uh, <laughs> expansion board and this is where you, you would uh, realize that I'm not really that techy is that I didn't read all the documentation I just realized later that it is actually not gonna work so yeah too bad uh, I couldn't use this but it was a blessing in disguise in a sense that 
given that I was able to route that, I, ma I made a small mod in the mounting for the GPU. I actually carved a small portion for this cable to be able to protrude outside is that I was able to use this in a very critical moment of this build which was the GPU so as you can see in the sample photos the GPUs are normally mounted by a riser cable in this case it looks better rather than uh, slotting them directly to the motherboard so you could showcase the graphics card in a vertical way yeah in this case it's a horizontal uh, it's a horizontal way yeah. but anyways what happened is that I didn't realize that you know when you mount a GPU through a, uh, a when you mount a gen 4 GPU through a gen 3 riser cable to a gen 4 motherboard it doesn't work and I've realized this after actually referring to some of the YouTube videos and this guy I yeah I've I think I'm subscribed to him but uh, he specializes in ITX PC builds and he was able to point this out and I realized too late because by the time I I, I learned about this I have already f I have already bought the RTX 3090 thinking that the RTX 3080 that I bought was a defective one so I ended up with two cards and uh, yeah uh, that's unfortunate unfortunate and a very costly mistake but basically just to recap on what he said is that we you need to fiddle the bio settings and you need to change the settings uh, for in the bios to to restrict it to gen 3 so that you know it could recognize the graphics card so i did that but again you know when you're building a pc you have to fiddle around many things and you end up with uh, having to clear the cmos and once you do that all the settings in the bios gets reset and now i need all the th oh, i need to do those things uh, all over again so I found out that this PCIe riser cable that I've uh, routed behind the GPU mount was very useful in a sense that I was able to mount a cheaper graphics card GeForce GT 710. It's a funless model uh, with a, with a mounting with a PCI slotting that fits that small. PCI slot so I was able to use that to you know as a temporary way for me to get into the BIOS and change the uh, settings so it was a very very uh, it was a blessing in disguise uh, I thought I was depressed because I was not able to use the Thunderbolt 3 but it ended up to be a very convenient way for me to easily mount this in in, in case I had to change or fiddle the uh, uh, you know the bias settings so yeah very good and to drive all these components together in the middle of all these components is the new CPU from AMD the 5950X so again I made a stupid mistake in rush buying and uh, you know pull, pulling my trigger on 3950X prior to the announcement of 5950X and um, I initially thought of uh, you know to just settle settle for 3950X but after watching uh, the video from Dan Suzuki he is another uh, Twitch streamer who does mainly sim racing content for iRacing he, he kindly made a very comprehensive video about the benchmarks for triple screens for iRacing and one thing that I learned uh, from his video is that the GPU was okay uh, the 3080 was giving us uh, better frame rates but I didn't know that iRacing was very reliant on CPU especially for single core performance 
in this new CPU from AMD was uh, was spot on, and I couldn't resist but uh, you know jump on it and uh, got myself a 5950X. So yeah, <laughs> a lot of wasted money on this build. So with that said, uh, I think it took me around three to four months to actually start uh, from start to finish to build this PC whilst waiting for the parts waiting for the backup parts and uh, so many things plus um, the water water block for the GPUs didn't become uh, available until around December or November late November so yeah it, it took me so much time and um, but the end result is very good um, I'm happy with it so the CPU block is from Barrow, the reservoir is from Barrow, the water pump is from Barrow. And initially I was thinking of using the Barrow fittings, but as I was looking around with EK water blocks, their fitting looked a little bit more classier. So I went with their fittings and uh, I routed all the uh, tubings, which is not easy. It was a good learning uh, experience for me. But um, overall, when you're when you're struggling so much with this kind of build, you get attached to your build, yeah. You get attached to the PC. So I feel a, a unique connection to my PC right now, and uh, I want to be using this for a long time. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with the end result. Um, although I had to, yeah, uh, I had to uh, struggle with some of the settings initially, but turned out well so that's it just to recap just to keep uh, just to give you a bullet points on what other tips I have for you is that when you do the uh, water water tubing uh, routing I found this one interesting uh, tool it's a primo chill F R uh, RFB uh, it kind of helps you finish the the cut uh, of the tube yeah so I'll put a uh, I'll put all the parts link in the description below so I suggest getting this if you have a drill or if you have a uh, you know electric driver or whatever to smoothen out the part rather than sandpapering uh, the, the the tubes yeah so that's one and uh, yeah be careful with the power supply size because not all power supply would fit into that cover uh, consider routing a separate PCIe smaller PCIe riser cable similar to what I've done in case you will be using a gen 4 gen 4 system yeah, gen 4 graphics card and gen 4 uh, motherboard although we are seeing more and more gen 4 pcie riser cables on the market but they're still expensive and uh, it takes some time for them to ship out to your place i guess so yeah uh, i i suggest doing this in case you need to do something also i've uh, i would like to share with you some of the question marks i still have until today like for example the water pump the water pump tends to get noisy uh, when the temperature gets high I'm not quite sure what that is initially uh, I realized that I've actually uh, slotted the three pin socket to a case fan uh, pin in the motherboard so I transferred that to the CPU kind of solved the problem initially but I realized that uh, as the water temperature rises it starts to make some noise so I still don't know what's causing that maybe it's the made maybe the fan is uh, defective but when it's sitting idle it's so quiet so I'm not very concerned at the moment but when you are streaming and playing eye racing it tends to you know get louder so that's one question that I have and two is that the what water block for the GPU has some stains on it I don't know where it's coming from I don't know if it is removable I don't even know if it's a rust or just a stain but yeah um, 
slightly concerned about this, but other, uh, other than that, the uh, the, C, uh, the PC is performing well. So I don't know if you guys could help me out. You know, please uh, put it in the description below, uh, in the comments. Uh, and that will be very very helpful for me. So yeah, that wraps up the video. I think um, this is actually my first time making this kind of video, so I'm not quite sure how well I did. English is not even my native tongue, so <laughs> apologies if I had any mi mispronunciation or grammatical errors. But that aside, uh, I hope that you know some of the things that I mentioned in this video would be helpful for some of the guys who are looking into building something similar to this uh, PC uh, that I have here. So yeah, uh, please leave your comments if you have any advice or questions. You know, uh, remind you, I'm not that technical, so I'm not able to answer all the technical questions there. But I'll try to do it to the best of my abilities. Yeah. And as I mentioned in the earlier part of the video, I do streaming. Uh, I do. I'll put the link below for the links of the Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. I mainly do eye racing uh, uh, contents, and it's fun. It's uh, hilarious. It's dramatic sometimes. Consider saying hi, following, or checking them out when you have time. Anyways, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you in the future videos. Cheers.